Greetings, Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be important end times uh, part two. Oh, yeah. All right, so uh, important end time study part two. Uh, get your King James Bible, and we're going to take a look at a few things here. Now, just so you know, the, uh, well, I've covered a lot of the stuff in previous studies, so we're going to kind of jump around here a little bit, and if you want to pause and read an entire chapter, uh, that is what I would suggest. I've got uh, two or three other studies that I'm wanting to do, and I'm going to do them until tube deletes the channel so we'll see how that works now what does the Bible mean when it says signs and wonders the uh, false prophet in the end times is going to be able to do signs and wonders well it's talking about miracles well can you prove that to me oh let's see how about Exodus 3 and verse 20 and I will stretch out mine hand and smite Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do in the midst thereof. And after that, he, he who, Pharaoh, and after that, he will let you go. Exodus 7, 3. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart. Now, this is the Lord speaking. And multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. Remember the plagues of Egypt? God said he would do all the different things. You know, plague of flies, plague of lice, uh, darkness, the hail. I mean, you know, signs and wonders. It has reference to miracles. Well, guess what? In the book of Revelation and Paul's writings, the false prophet is going to be able to do signs and wonders also, which is just another way of saying miracles. So people are going to be fooled by the false prophet. Now, those who have studied the Bible, not just read it, you know, they're not going to be fooled because, uh, for example, I there's this so-called Messianic Jewish site called One for Israel. And uh, they keep talking about, oh, Messiah, Messiah, Messiah. Well, you know, in Matthew 24, Jesus warned the false Messiah comes first. I mean, over and over, Mark 13, the false Messiah comes first. And I've said it over and over and over. If we're not caught up into the clouds, in the air, in the sky, it's the wrong one. But when you get your preachers and the Messianics and TBN and the 700 Club and all the rest of your TV preachers and all the rabbis telling you, oh, Messiah has come. The world's going to fall for it, especially when they, when the false prophet can do miracles. You watch. And, the, and those church people that you sat next to and, and said, oh, God bless you, Jesus loves you, they'll be the first ones to turn against you and turn you in. You watch. It's going to happen. Matthew 24, 24. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Mark 13, 22, for false Christs and false prophets shall rise and shall show signs and wonders 
to seduce even if, it, oh, I'm sorry, if it were possible, even the very elect. Now, I covered this in the last part one, but we're going to read it again. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. So what's this talking about? The Lord coming and his sheep being gathered to the great shepherd, right? That ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. Isn't that what we read in Matthew 24, 24? For that day, what day? The second coming. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. Uh, sounds like we're there, people. Except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. So Matthew 24 tells you the false Christ comes first. Ma uh, 2 Thessalonians 2 and verse 3 says, For that day, the second coming, for that day shall not come except a, there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. The false Christ comes first. But if you listen to the pre-tribbers, they'll say, Oh, well, there's no, you know, it's the imminent pre-trib rapture. It could happen at any second. Nothing needs to happen prior to the Lord returning to, to take us up in the pre-trib rapture. And then they'll tell you that, well, you know, the, the pre-trib rapture happens before the second coming. You know, it's a different event. You know, the day of the Lord, the day of Christ, it's not the same thing, they'll tell you. So basically, they're denying that the Lord is Christ. And Christ is the Lord. When they tell you that the day of Christ and the day of the Lord is two different things, they're basically denying that Jesus Christ is Lord. Think about it. Don't take my word for it. Think about it. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, unless this happened in 70 AD, there has to be another temple. And I don't think it happened in 70 AD because they'll tell you that one of the Roman generals did this. I don't think the Roman general proclaimed himself to be God when the emperor of Rome was there. Because I don't think the emperor of Rome would have appreciated one of his generals telling the emperor, well, I'm God, you're going to have to worship me, emperor. You know, this is, this is the kind of junk that comes out of these churches nowadays. And they'll tell you, oh, that all happened in 70 A.D., no, it didn't. A lot of it happened in 70 AD, but not all of it. Ugh. See, they're devils. They're sent of the devil to deceive us. That's why the Bible says to study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And Baptists do not rightly divide the word of truth. Jesus comes back one time. He doesn't come back one and a half times and then takes the church somewhere and then comes back with them later. I can't find that anywhere. Ugh, they're idiots. Well, you know, what do you expect? They made a celebrity out of, out of Billy Graham. And he was one of the big pushers of this pre-trib rapture thing. Yeah, people will argue with me and say, oh, he taught a clear thing for salvation. Well, then why did 
he sent people to the Catholic Church. You know, when he had his little revival things, so-called, and they says, well, yeah, I was raised as a Catholic when I was a child. Oh, well, here, go see Father Mulcahy over here. You know, he'll talk to you. Let me send you back to Rome. Yeah, that's, that's the gospel. Really? Really? I don't think so. You know, and why? And if he was a true man of God, why, why didn't the Lord open his eyes up to the pre-trib rapture? You know, there's some things I don't, uh, uh, like Kent Hovind, I got a lot of respect for him in his field of teaching. But you know what? He went to prison for, what, nine and a half years, almost ten years? And he found out the pre-trib rapture was a lie. And he started exposing it. And guess what happened to all those ministries that used to support him? Oh, well, you're not invited to our church anymore, Kent. You know, a guy that spent nine and a half years in prison for his expose of the uh, JWO. Yeah, if you know what the J stands for. I mean, he doesn't understand that, I don't think. But, uh, you know, the guy was nine and a half years in prison. And then he reads the Bible for himself, and he's like, wait a minute, where's the pre-trib rapture? Uh, it's not in there, Kent. You know that. I know that. Some people know that. But, uh, you know, they'll turn on you. Oh, well, we're fundamentalists. No, you're not. You're liars. The pre-trib rapture is not a fundamental tenet of the faith. Jesus didn't say, believe on me in the pre-trib rapture and thou shalt be saved. They're liars. I have no use for them. And when all these people find out they've been lied to, they're going to turn against their lukewarm faith. Except there come a falling away first. And you haven't even seen the falling away. You're going to see the churches emptied out. Do you know England, or the UK I should say, the churches are empty. They're being turned into mosques. Do you know what the number one baby name is in England now? Muhammad. Not John. Muhammad. We are under the judgment of God. So, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Sorry, Roman general didn't do that. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? See, Paul, with tears, warned these people. And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. Wow. You know, if you read Job chapter 1, God basically was challenged by Satan to test Job and says, oh yeah, let me uh, play with Job and he'll curse you to your face. And I'm of the opinion something similar to that happened in the Garden of Eden. Now, it's not recorded. Um, some people say the story is in the book of Adam and Eve. I don't know if... 
I just don't, you know, when I read these extra biblical writings, I, you know, like I say, I don't take it with a grain of salt. I take it with an entire salt shaker. You know, it's like the book of Enoch. Uh, there's parts of it that seem like it's real. And then there's other parts that are just like, yeah, that's way out there. You know, I just, and there's more than one book of Enoch. Uh, there's uh, the one that's translated by Charles. Uh, that's the one that most church people uh, that like Enoch, that's the one that they like or whatever. I don't know. But uh, the other one's like a book of magic and stuff. And oh, like I mentioned before, uh, somebody sent me a drive, a USB drive from Amazon. I don't know who it's from. Come on, tell me. Of course, I'm going to ask you the name brand, and I'm going to ask you how big the drive is. But, uh, yeah, come on. I have no idea who this is. So, but, uh, maybe we ought to, um, take a look at Job chapter one real quick. What do you think? I guess we could do this. I just read this a couple studies ago, but, you know, it's... <sighs> You know, people think, you know, just read John 3.16 and, you know, God love the world and just believe on Jesus and you're saved. That's it. You know, I'm telling you people, in whatever form the mark of the beast is, and you're going to know when you can't buy or sell without it, you're going to know what it is. I mean, it'll It'll come. Uh, there's, we'll find out. I mean, it's, but when it does, there's going to be a lot of people that are just going to go along, go with the flow, whatever the world's going with, they're going to go with it too. Especially if they're 501c3 church pastor and 501c3, for those of you that don't might be listening to me for the first time. Uh, it's a section in the IRS tax code that makes a so-called church tax exempt. But actually, it's a you have to get a charter from the state. In other words, a corporation. It's a business. 501c3 means that you're incorporated in the state. You're basically a corporation. You're a business with a tax exemption from the government. Yeah. I don't think Jesus went to Rome and got a business license and then got tax exemption from them to preach the gospel. And you know what? That is why one of the big reasons the United States fought the crown during the Revolutionary War in the 1770s because you basically had to preach what the Church of England preached or that was it I mean you were in trouble and they got tired of it so all the people that got tired of the Church of England came over to the United States to have more freedom well then the the crown put their dirty little hands over here and taxed everything and the people got fed up and says you know what let's try to kick them out of here well we tried but it didn't work completely but uh, freedom of religion today is kind of a joke um, because it's there there's laws on the books now where the Bible and most Probably most all my teachings are going to be illegal. I once saw a picture, a meme or whatever you call it, and it says, uh, if being a Christian was a criminal offense, is there enough evidence to convict you? Well, with probably a thousand plus Bible studies, 
for me yeah i think so yeah yeah all right let's look at now we just read in second thessalonians verse 9 it said even him whose coming is after the working of satan with all power and signs and lying wonders well let's read job 1 verse 1 there was a man in the land of uz whose name was job and that man was perfect and upright and one that feared god and eschewed evil wow i wish the lord could say that about me but i know better Perfect, upright, feared God, and eschewed or hated evil. And there was born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was seven thousand sheep and three hundred uh, and three thousand camels and five hundred yoke of oxen and five hundred she asses and a very great household, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. And his sons went and feasted in their houses every one his day, probably a birthday, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. So eat, drink, and be merry. Uh, I guess we'll read the whole thing. What do you think? Verse 4. And it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons of sin and curse God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. And like I've mentioned before, you know, people say, Oh, well, Job did this for his sons, but not his daughters. Well, maybe his daughters were godly and righteous, and his sons were a bunch of drunken whatever, you know. It said that they invited their sisters. Who knows? Maybe their sisters didn't go because they're like, I don't want to get, you know, have a drunken party. You know, that doesn't honor the Lord. I don't know. I have a feeling, though, that Job's daughters were far more godly than his sons. So, verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And if you don't know who these sons of God are, go to Job 38, where the sons of God shouted for joy at the foundation or the creation of the earth. When was Adam formed and had the breath of life breathed into him? Six days after Adam couldn't possibly be one of the sons of God. He was a son of God, or the son of God, but these are sons of God, plural. And they shouted for joy at the creation of the earth. They got to be angels. There's no other way around it. Believers are not called sons of God until the New Testament. You're talking probably five well, I'm sorry, no, not five. Probably 3,000 years later, 3,500 years later, maybe 4,000, I don't know. You know, 3,500 years later. And it's not until after Christ comes and the Holy Spirit indwells his believers until they're called sons of God. The Old Testament, no. Sons of God, plural, refers to angels put that in your genesis 6 pipe and smoke it that's all i can tell you and i know i just covered this material recently but uh but adam is indeed called the son of god because after all god was his father jesus is called the only begotten son of god begotten of the father adam was not begotten of the father there's a difference and if you want to know the difference look on my playlist who is jesus jesus was god come in the flesh prophet priest and 
one day coming king. Big difference between Adam and Jesus. Je Adam is called, well, they call him the first Adam. Jesus is called the last Adam. Why? Because they had the same mother and the same father. And no, Mary was, I don't believe Mary was uh, Jesus' mother. She might have carried him in her womb, but her, I don't believe her DNA was used. And the reason I say that is because mankind had sin nature fall upon all flesh. And if Mary's DNA was used, then that means he, he inherited some of that corruption. You know, there's a reason why it's called the virgin birth. And of course, the Catholics will say, well, Mary was the mother of God. You know, I did a Bible study on that too. Why I don't think Mary was the actual DNA, physical DNA mother of Jesus. So if you're interested, give me a comment, do a search. So, sons of God, people. Now there was a day, Job 1.6, now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. Ah, and like I've said, people will say, oh, well, see, the sons of God here, well, Satan hasn't been cast out of heaven yet because he presented himself before the Lord, and he's in heaven. It doesn't say that. It just says that they came to present themselves before the Lord. It doesn't say where the Lord is. I mean, the Lord could have been in heaven. Could have been. The Lord could have been on Mars or Venus or possibly the earth, which is what I think. I think the Lord is on the earth here and the sons of God are presenting themselves before him. So, I don't know. And yeah, I know, I covered this in the previous study. So, verse 7, And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? That there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Hast not thou made an hedge about him? And I did a Bible study on the hedge too. It's like a fence. And Satan's not allowed to cross over that fence. You can cross the fence to go to Satan, but Satan can't cross that fence to come to you. As long as you're inside the fence, inside God's will, you've got a certain amount of protection. Let's read about it. Satan's complaining. Hast not thou made an hedge about him, and about his house, and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. Oh, yeah. I honestly wonder. Now, remember, Satan is called the accuser. Uh, let me see here. Let me find something real quick. All right, Joshua um, um, is the high priest. And this is recorded in the book of Zechariah, Z-E-C-H-A-R-I-A-H. -H. You've got Zephaniah, and then you've got Zech Zechariah. I always get those two confused. But this is Zechariah, one of the minor prophets in the Old Testament. I know. Minor in size, not minor in important. Verse 1. And he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. Now, this Joshua, uh, 
same word that the you know who's are always saying Yeshua, Yeshua. Honestly, I think they mispronounce words on purpose. I, I I think the King James translators got everything right. Because I've noticed they mispronounce words on perfect purpose, my opinion, so that you don't make connections between certain words in the Bible. Uh, Joshua and Caleb were two of the spies that Moses sent out into the land. Joshua took over for Moses after Moses died. Joshua is the sixth book in my King James Bible. And then uh, there was a high priest called Joshua. And uh, it has reference to Savior from what I understand. So, here it is. Joshua the high priest is standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing on his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, verse 2, The Lord rebuked thee, O Satan, even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem, rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? What fire? The fire of hell, right? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. What are these filthy garments? Our sin, nature, right? Our clothing, our, our, we're clothed in flesh with original sin. Very important doctrine of original sin, people. You know, there's a reason why. Uh, it talks about white garments washed in the blood of the Lamb in Revelation. There's a reason for that. We got to exchange our robes on this earth with heavenly garments, heavenly robes washed white in the blood of the Lamb. Very important. Very important. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel, and he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Now this is the Lord speaking, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee. Wow. The Lord pardoned his iniquity, his sin. I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with a change of raiment. Raiment, clothing. He's going to give him a change of clothes. Clean clothes. Wow. And I said, let them set a fair mitre upon his hair, head. That's kind of a hat. And so they set a fair mitre upon his head and clothed him with garments. And the angel of the Lord stood by, and the angel of the Lord protested unto Joshua, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, If thou wilt walk in my ways, and if thou wilt keep my charge, then thou shalt also judge my house, and shall also keep my courts, and I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by. Hear now, O Joshua the high priest, thou and thy fellows that sit before thee, for they are men wondered at. For behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch. I did a Bible study on the branch. For behold, the stone, well, what's the stone? Uh, isn't Jesus Christ called the cornerstone? Isn't he called the rock? Oh yeah, did another study on that. For behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua, upon one stone shall be seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave the graving thereof, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. That'll be the day the Lord returns, people. In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, shall ye call every man his neighbor under the vine and under the fig tree. Did a Bible study on the vine. That's Israel. The fig tree. Judah. Representative of Judah. All right, let's go back to Job 1. All right, back to Job chapter 1, 
verse 11. Satan says, but put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. Yeah, he's got sons, he's got daughters, he's got all kinds of animals. Uh, you know, touch all that he has, he's going to curse you, Lord. Verse 12, and the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thine power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. In other words, you can do anything you want to him, but you can't kill him. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Now listen to this carefully. This shows you the power of Satan. Of course, Satan's on a leash. And in the tribulation period, it's going to be a really, really long leash. Really long. Those of you that are dog owners, you get it. So, verse 13. And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. All right, I guess his daughters were uh, drinking. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them, and the Sabaeans, the Arabs, and the Sabaeans fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Well, there goes the there goes the cattle. Well, the oxen and the asses. Verse 16. So evidently he's Satan's got the power to have the over the Sabaeans to do his will, right? While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God has fallen from heaven. Very, very important. Remember this. This is one of the things the false prophet in Revelation 13 is going to have the power to do. Bring fire down from the sky, people. And almost everybody is going to fall for this being a miracle of the Lord God of heaven, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But it's not. It's the other God with the little g, with the, yeah, the little g God. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God is fallen from heaven. Now this is I I the guy is saying the fire of God, but it's the fire of Satan. It's the fire from Satan. That's this is basically going to mimic the miracle that Elijah did in the book of Kings. You should read that. Like I've said before, Elijah is probably my favorite Old Testament prophet. Maybe my favorite prophet. I don't know. I did an entire... Uh, we had to do a character study in the Bible, in Bible college. And he was the character that I picked. And boy, I took a long time. Because I had to typewrite it. Yeah, typewriter. Can you believe that? I actually bought a typewriter about you know, around 20 years ago. Yeah, the computer makes things so much easier. So the fire of God is fallen from heaven and hath burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Wow. So... The fire of God came down from heaven and burned up the sheep. Seventeen. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans, uh, this is part of the Babylonians, made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away, yea, and have slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest 
brother's house, and behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness. What is that? A tornado? Maybe? I don't know. There came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young men, and they are dead, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. You know, it doesn't say the daughters are dead. Maybe the daughters escaped. Some people will say, oh, well, the daughters, they don't matter. That's why we don't mention them. I, I don't know. I, honestly, I, I think... Uh, I think Job's daughters were probably very godly. But, hey, what do I know? Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And all this Job sinned not nor charged God foolishly. So, what power did Satan have? Fire from the sky and wind. I know I just recently did this in a study, but, you know. Very, very important. All right, let's go back to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. It's going to have power to be able to do signs, miracles, and lying wonders, people. Just like in the book of Job. Fire from the sky, tornadoes maybe, you know, mighty wind. Verse 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness. You see, those that want to live outside of God's rules, listen to this. This is going to be their doom. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God, not Satan, and for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie. The Lord himself is going to make them believe that the false prophet and the beast, the beast of Revelation, some people call him the Antichrist. You got four names. Well, there's many Antichrists. But then there will be the Antichrist, right? The man of sin, the son of perdition, the beast. All refer to the same being. Some people would argue with me, but that's okay. You know, you don't, we don't have to agree on everything. I just know that you don't want to take his mark and worship him. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. And I was there not that long ago. Verse 13. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth, whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or or our epistle. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself, and God, even our Father, which hath loved us, and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, grace, comfort your hearts, and establish you in every good word and work. All right. Let's go to Revelation 
chapter 13. Yeah, I know. I've been repeating myself a lot lately. But, you know, sometimes repetition's good. And like I said, if we're not caught up into the clouds in the air to be with the Lord, it's going to be the wrong Messiah. That is probably the most important thing that you could ever remember if we are the end time generation. I'm not saying we are. I mean, they've been saying that for two, almost 2,000 years. But like I've said before, and I'll say it again, every day that passes makes us one day closer. And it does. So, hey. Revelation 13, verse 1. Oh, one more thing, everybody. Listen, um, you know who, Tube, changed their terms of service. Seems that they can uh, put advertising on all your videos. And, of course, you have no choice in what advertising they put on. So, hey, if there's a, a T-shirt printer that has a Pride T-shirt for the LBGT uh, crowd, you know, show your pride with a flag and everything, and they put that as an advertisement on my channel, I don't have a choice. So if you see that kind of stuff, I want you to know I'm not making money on it. I've had people even tell me, oh, Bob, you should, you know, monetize your channel, you know, and blah, blah, blah. I, I can't do that. I can't do that, you know. Uh, Jesus said, freely have received, freely give. And that's what I've done. I've tried to uh, freely share what was freely given to me. But it cost him plenty. It cost him his flesh and bone and blood. Oh, yeah, it cost him his blood. But uh, just know that uh, if they monetize my channel, there's nothing I can do. I mean, they might even have a, a gay dating site on my channel. Or, uh, you know, join the Church of Satan. You know? Here's our 800 number. 1-800-666-6666. Or one 866 Six 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 six. Yeah, you know. Uh, order now, get a free uh, "How to Be Damned and Go to Hell" package. I I don't know. A little bit of sarcasm there, but uh, not really. You know. Yeah, I just got the uh, we we got the notice. YouTube's chain uh, terms are changing. So I don't know how much longer I'm going to be on the tube. So what can I tell you? All right, let's read Revelation 13, verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Well, in Revelation 12, it tells you who the dragon is, the Satan and the devil. Verse 3, And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon. Well, that's what Satan wants. You know? Uh, Satan uh, decided to uh, ha have a war to dethrone God. He wanted to be the top dog, the big cheese, the head honcho. But, uh, sorry Charlie, only the best tuna gets to be Starkist. 
that job's already filled and uh, I don't foresee any vacancies anytime soon. So, and they worshiped the dragon which gave power unto the beast and they worshiped the beast saying, who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. So, you know, you hear people talk about the seven-year tribulation period. Well, actually, it's approximately two, three-and-a-half-year periods, 42 months, uh, 1,260 days. The thing is, the first three and a half years is, my opinion, called the time of sorrows. Uh, that's when things are getting bad. But the last three and a half years, that's when all hell breaks loose on earth, I guess you could say. So, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months, and he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. Now, who are these saints? Well, if you listen to the demon nominational churches, it's the group of people that have been denying Christ for almost 2,000 years. But I don't think so. Well, let's look at Revelation 12 real quick. Verse 11, and they, who's they? And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not, and they loved not their lives unto the death. But chaplain, Bob, you don't understand. that We're gone. We're not around here for that. That's you know, pre-trib rapture happens. Well, how about verse 17, Revelation 12, 17? And the dragon was wroth. He was angry. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. See, the dragon doesn't care if you keep the commandments of God. But if you got the testimony of Jesus Christ, you're in big trouble. But if you have the testimony of Jesus Christ, but you don't keep the commandments of God, and what commandments? Oh, Bob, you're going to say it again? Yeah, I'm going to say it again. The two commandments. Jesus said, Somebody asked Jesus, what was the great commandment in the law? He said, love the Lord. And the second is like unto it, love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two hang all the law and the prophets. Somebody tell the Seventh-day Adventists. I don't think Mary, uh, well, Ellen White went to heaven and saw the Sabbath glowing on the Ten Commandments of stone. I don't think so. Now, if you love the Lord, and you love your neighbor, and, you know, uh, you know, if you live next door to the Church of Satan, I think you ought to sell a place and move. But, you know, that's just my opinion. Yeah, I know, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. But, you know, love the Lord and love thy neighbor. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. If you want to put aside the Sabbath day and keep it to honor the Lord, hey, that's great. Isn't that loving the Lord? Yes. But if you keep the commandments of God and you don't have the testimony of Jesus, you're in big trouble. Or if you have the testimony of Jesus, but you're a hitman for the mafia, you're also in trouble. I wonder how many mafia hitmen go to a, ch a church or a synagogue, for that matter. And, uh, keep, you know, Keep all the other commandments. I don't know. Did you know that Murder, Inc., uh, the, there was two brothers in Chicago. Uh, they assassinated Al Capone's boss. He owned a flower shop. Uh, they were two nice uh, Revelation 2-9 boys 
from uh, New York City. Yeah. Yeah, but the TV wants you to think that they're all a bunch of Italians or Sicilians. I don't think so. But what can I tell you? All right. So, back to Revelation 13, verse 7. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. Remember, keep the commandments and have the testimony of Jesus. And to overcome them. So he's going to be allowed to overcome the saints. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations over all and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world if any man have an ear let him hear he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity so if it's your lot to go into captivity, to be taken captive, to be going to a prison for your faith in Christ, go. Go willingly. Why? Why do, I, why do I say that? Because it says, He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Ah, okay. So if they lead you to a camp with a guillotine, you know, the Bible, re the, the Jesus records in the Bible, Matthew 24, that, you know, if they take you to the councils or in the synagogues to get your head cut off, that uh, the Lord will, the Holy Spirit will speak through you as a testimony against them. And that will be your proof that you're saved if we live to see that long I don't know maybe they'll kill us with a vaccine or chemtrails or poison in our water and food or Lord knows what here he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword here is the patience and the faith of the saints so, have patience and have faith. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb. Oh, yeah, he's going to pretend to be the Lamb of God. And he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly womb was healed. And he doeth great wonders miracles people and he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men oh didn't we just read about that yeah he's going to mimic the powers and miracles of elijah and didn't we read about that in Job? Satan had fire come down and burned up the sheep. That's what you call a burnt uh, sacrifice. Oh, yeah. Verse 14. So that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. I tell you, people are going to be, uh, they're going to be changing their underwear when this happens. Verse 14, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast, should be killed. Television? Is that the image of the beast? And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their in, in, to receive a mark in 
their right hand or in their foreheads. All your modern Bibles say on. And then they show you the picture with that stupid 666 barcode on people's hands or on their forehead. Satan's not that stupid. And when you realize who owns the publishing companies, yeah. And then when you read Genesis chapter 3 about the serpent in the garden, they got a snake hanging from an apple tree. Yeah, that's the kind of nonsense they want us to believe. It's pretty sad when you realize the largest Bible publisher in the world, English-speaking world, is owned by the company that prints the Satanic Bible by the Church of Satan. Yeah, and their parent company is the parent company of Fox Network. Yeah. And they call that a right-wing television stations. Yeah, I don't think so. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom, let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. What day was man created? I think the sixth day. Some people say the eighth. I say they're wrong, but, you know, what can I tell you? Uh, what star is on the Israeli flag? Uh, it's got six points, six triangles, and in the middle it's got a six-sided, what do they call that? A, uh, well, it's, it's, what do they call that? Yeah, what do they call that? Oh, 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 I got it, Chaplain Bob. Here we go, I got it. It's called a hexagon. Have you ever heard of putting a hex on somebody? A witchcraft? Oh yeah. So you got six points, six triangles, and in the middle you got a hexagon. They put a hex on them. Oh, Chaplain Bob, that's just a coincidence. Uh, the Israeli star, 666, right? Oh, you're, Bob, you see conspiracies in everything, don't you? Well, not everything, but uh, almost everything. Well, many things, I should say. So, People, all I know is, if we're not caught up in the sky, in the clouds, when Christ is returning, it's the wrong Messiah. The false Messiah comes first, and he's going to be doing miracles. Don't fall for it. All I know is in Luke 21, 17, it's, Jesus said, And ye shall be hated, hated, of all men, for my name's sake. Uh, they already hate the name. They hate the name of Jesus. You know what? That's why they change, They try to trick you into saying Yeshua. At least that's my opinion. Yeah. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. They already hate the name. That's why they refuse to say Jesus. And I'm telling you, people, the New Testament was written in Greek. There's 5,000 plus partial manuscripts, many of which are over 1,000 years old. And they all say Jesus in Greek. Yeah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Does that offend you? Too bad. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. All right, we're almost done here. Matthew chapter 10, verse 16. Jesus said, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, 
and they will scourge you. They will beat you. They will whip you. And they will scourge you in their synagogues. And who hangs out in the synagogues? Yeah, the, those that never liked Jesus, right? And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what, Ye shall speak. Don't think about what you're going to say. For it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. Yep. Think about that. The Holy Spirit will speak through you. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father of the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Huh, but Chaplain Bob, I... My Baptist church told me once saved, always saved, eternal security. Well, I don't know. I, I, you know, have your pastor argue with Satan when, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> have your pastor argue with, uh, well, yeah, Satan, I guess, or, or, or have him argue with Jesus when he meets him. But when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another, for verily I say to you, Ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. The servant is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master. Now what happened to the master? He got crucified, right? And the servant as his Lord. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, Lord of the flies, how much more shall they call them of his household? Wow. And just remember something, people. If, uh, if you do, if we do, any of us do end up with our head on the chopping block, you know, you'll close your eyes, be over in a second, and when you open up your eyes again, well, 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 9. But as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Keep that in mind. That is... That is a promise, people. All right, well, you know, and another thing, God is looking for a bride, not a whore, which is what this basically, this whole world is going after. He wants a virgin bride, not Jezebel, the whore, that is in bed with everything and every everyone. And sadly, most of the churches work for the work for the devil. You know, people think, uh, you know, they, I have heard from people that worked for the IRS that they actually would go through parking lots with cameras. Well, I don't know, movie cameras, whatever. And record the license plates of all the cars in the parking lot. And they were doing this years ago, long before they had the power to, you know, of the internet and stuff. 
Honestly, I think, for example, the Blue Letter Bible was uh, put up by uh, Chuck Missler. He was part of the uh, Calvary Chapel crowd. I think he was one of the founders of Calvary Chapel. I honestly think he put that side up not to help the believers, but to help identify who was looking at what. I honestly believe that. But if I'm wrong and Chuck is in the kingdom, well, I'll have to apologize to him. But, uh, you know, he was uh, tied in with military intelligence. Does that in and of itself make him bad? Hey, I've done a lot of things in the past that I'm not proud of, but uh, but I've never heard him say that he was sorry that he got involved with all that stuff. So, I don't know. We'll all be judged whether or not we have the blood of Christ and we'll be judged by our actions. So, and I've got a lot to answer for, especially the first half of my life. And some things in the second half of my life, too. So, all right, people, stay close to Jesus. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.